The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. So when Jesus said the laborers are few, it was because he was the only one going about preaching. So now he had to reproduce. Which means that the ministry of our Lord Jesus is not a one-man show. The ministry of our Lord Jesus is not a one-man show. God wants the local assembly to reproduce laborers. There should be an increase in those who carry the gospel to others. And there should be an increase in those who reproduce themselves in disciples. It should be an ongoing increase in raising laborers. Laborers will produce laborers who will raise laborers who will reproduce laborers because of the global harvest of souls into the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. The local church should be where we reproduce the gospel of Christ. Something unique happened in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. On the day of Pentecost, all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. All of them. And they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Everybody was filled. It was not given to a select few. The Holy Ghost was given to everybody. And Peter lifted up his voice and preached. And the Bible tells us it continued till chapter 4. Now in chapter 5 verse 42, the Bible tells us, And daily in the temple, and from house to house, they cease not to preach and teach Jesus Christ. That already show, shows you that ministry has now been distributed in the early church. People were preaching in houses. People were preaching in the temple. So there was a multiplicity of ministers rising in the local church. In chapter 6, the more people multiplied, the more there was the need for leadership. So deacons were appointed who were to serve tables. But these same people that were to serve stables, one of them went down to the city of Samaria. In Acts chapter 8 verse 4, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ. Then in chapter 9 of Acts, Ananias, a disciple, he is able to handle visions and interpret visions well. Saul of Tarsus was sent to Ananias. Ananias was not an apostle. Ananias was a disciple. That means he was a disciple that was well discipled. Such that he can handle visions, interpret visions. He was conversant with the things of the spirit. He has been well discipled. That means that the work of the ministry has spread in the temple. Not only that he goes to the house of Saul to get him filled with the Holy Ghost. Which means a disciple is someone who not only teach the word of God, but can minister the things of the spirit. A disciple is someone who is not only given to teaching and preaching, but can minister the things of the spirit. He's someone that has been trained to operate in the gifts of the spirit. And he can interact with the gifts of the spirit. In Acts chapter 9 verse 10 to 16, PJ read for me. Acts chapter 9 verse 10 to 16. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. So this guy was a disciple in Damascus. Read on. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Read on. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Read on. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Read on. 
But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So now, now the disciple by the name of Ananias is sent to go and minister to Paul who is going to be an apostle. An apostle of repute. So a disciple therefore is somebody that is conversant with the things of the spirit that has understood the practice of ministry, practical ministry and is engaged in ministering the things of the spirit. Not just teaching the word but ministering the things of the spirit has become mature that he could interpret visions, has become mature that he could follow the leading of the spirit. That's a disciple, which means disciples must be exposed, must be exposed to the teaching of God's word. Disciples must be exposed to sound teaching. They must be exposed to sound doctrine of the word of God. So this morning, we laid a foundation on the gospel and the practice of ministry. And we began to establish a few things. In the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 1. Read for me. Matthew chapter 1 verse number 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The son of David. The son of Abraham. So now Matthew begins the writing by establishing the humanity of Jesus. That Jesus was the son of, of David. And was the seed of Abraham. And he refers us back to the Old Testament. The beginning of the generations. The word generation there in the Greek is the word for Genesis. So Matthew opens his book by establishing the humanity of Christ. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. Read for me. Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now observe. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always. That's the deity of Christ. Only God can be with you always. So Matthew begins with the humanity of Christ and concludes his writing with the divinity of Christ. Lo, I am with you always. Establishing that Jesus is God. Now notice again, Mark does the same thing. In Mark chapter 1 verse 1, he establishes the humanity of Christ. Read for me, Mark chapter 1 verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. So now the word beginning again takes you back to Genesis. The beginning, just like Matthew refers to the generations, which is Genesis, Mark also refers to the beginning. All right, all of them refers to the beginning. All right, now Mark establishes the beginning, which is the word Genesis or the Greek word A-R-C-H-E. -A all right, the beginning. Then look at the way Mark concludes his writing. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20. Read for me. Mark 16, 15 to 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Next verse. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Next verse. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord working with them everywhere. So Mark concludes his book with the divinity of Christ. No man can be everywhere, but the Lord was everywhere. So he opens the book with the humanity of Christ and concludes his book with the divinity of Christ. Then now when you go to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, beginning at Moses. The word beginning again is Genesis. So Luke establishes the humanity of the Christ, the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that will follow. The sufferings of a man, the Christ, the man. 
So Luke also establishes the humanity of Christ and he concludes with the divinity of Christ. In Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Read for me verse number 49. Luke 24 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Until you be endued, I send. I send the promise of my Father. I send the Holy Ghost. So Jesus introduces a supernatural identity, power from on high. Power from on high. Okay, so that word on high is a word for heavenlies. Hupsos in the Greek. H-U-P-S-O-S. It's another word for the heavenlies on high. So on three occasions now we have seen the synoptic writers of the gospel introduces Jesus in his humanity and also in his divinity. Now John who was not a synoptic writer like we said in the first service because John was intentional. John was unique in the way he wrote. He was deliberate about what he wrote. His miracles were only seven, carefully selected and deliberate. All right? And uh, he doesn't write more. So it's not like the other apostles. And his apostle was very different. He begins with, in the beginning, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, the word Ake. Okay? In the beginning, just like Matthew, Mark, and Luke started with, in the beginning, John started with, in the beginning, was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. All right? And then verse 14. And the word became flesh. God became a man. Just like Matthew, Mark, and Luke took time to show you the humanity and the divinity of Christ, John also shows you the humanity. The word became flesh. The divinity of Christ, the word was God. The word became flesh. The humanity. The word was God. The divinity. All the writers took time to establish that God became Jesus. That God in the Old Testament became Jesus in the New Testament. God became a man. The humanity and the divinity of Christ. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.